be blessed by the divine good evening on behalf of sky online i extend my warm welcome on behalf of wcse uh, to professor shakti saravanan thank you sir for in uh, accepting our invitation today to give us this uh, lecture today on a beautiful evening today thank you ma'am a, a small introduction about uh, sir uh, professor shakti saravanan uh, is uh, the chief regional manager in an it solution company and he is the son of senior professor ulaganathan ayya he is blessed to have taken initiation at the age of 13 from our guru vetatin maharishi himself and 36 36 years he is in sky yoga uh, serving uh, serving uh, vetatri vetatri and spreading vetatri so we are really honored to have you sir today and he has been conducting sky yoga classes in government sectors psu corporates and yoga day sessions for corporate corporate companies colleges and Uh, schools and he has uh, his own sky yoga center in chennai in crompet for past last 22 years we are truly blessed and honored to have you today and we are eagerly waiting for your uh, lecture today ayya thank you so much vaalka valamudan vaalka valamudan thank you ma'am for your warm welcome and the introduction uh, my screen is visible yes ayya thank you valka vayyam valka valamudan be blessed by the divine let me in start my session with a small invocation song so that all of us will get unified in the same mental frequency though it is in tamil but still i'll try to elaborate during my discourse when it goes on திய வினை பதிவுகளை திருத்தி போக்கி தெளிந்த அறிவின் விழிப்பில் நீலைத்து என்றும் தூய வினை தேர்ந்தாற்றி துன்பம் நீக்கும் தொழில்களையே கடமையென தேர்ந்து செய்து மாயம் என்னும் மறை பொருளாம் அறிவறிந்து மண்ணுலகில் உயிர்கட்கு துன்பம் நீங்க நேயமுடன் தொண்டாற்றி இன்பம் துய்க்கும் நீரை வாழ்வாம் நெறியதுவே யோகமாகும் நேயமுடன் தொண்டாற்றி இன்பம் துய்க்கும் நீரை வாழ்வாம் நெறியதுவே யோகமாகும் பி பிளஸ் பை த டிவைன் குருவே துணை டியர் ட்ரூத் சீக்கர்ஸ் குட் ஈவினிங் டு ஒன் அண்ட் ஆல் ஆஃப் யூ இட் இஸ் மை ப்ளஷர் டு be part of this particular spiritual thinking and jointly exploring under the title of karma yoga and are of course whatever they been the experience i've been groomed by the senior professors all along i'll be sharing with you under this beautiful title karma yoga guruve tunai so the karma yoga basically swami in nutshell used to say in tamil kadavulai unarndor kadamayil vaalvar kadavulle arindor kadamayil vaalvar so in nutshell it talks about those who obtain the realization of god those who has attained the revelation called the enlightenment soul they normally what is the significance if you look at really this realization of god or attainment of the the perfection it simply they lead their life with the duty conscious and they found that is a way of life called karma yoga but then the other side 
those people has no spiritual thinking rather they have uh, the attitude of purely with the duty conscious by nature sooner or later they will also realize think and also the revelation of god they they are very closer to god like our scientific community they normally have that sort of a deep thinking and the duty conscious bound they normally very close to the god so i used to say they are like our uh, petty gods so they are very closer to the god so these are all the two core lines the silver lines swami used to say kadavulai unardor kadamayil vaalvar so there is nothing to obtain after the realization of truth after attaining the perfection of consciousness it is only the way of life to be as a fully with the duty conscious what far we have come to this world and that is a way of life karma yoga so the philosophy of life swami used to say it is basically in three essential components self nature and society every one of us life basically it is it's all getting concluded within these three essential points self it basically the physical body and the mind and then the society like us the so many uh, the entire population and the other living being contains a whole society and of course both the factors self and society above both there is a nature but if you look at these three components only which one we will be able to manage which one you will be able to control society obviously it has come in a long way by its own way of uh, culture experience and their way of life so you cannot control over the society and nature is above all of us you can't control the nature but then what else you can control what else you can personify what else you can sublimate is only the self so how the self development how the personality development how individually can grow in the spiritual path so that is the goal of the spirituality and that is how the spirituality the word come from the spirit spirit from the development of the spirit and to realize its origin that is how the word spirituality has come so the vedatriyam as a whole looking at uh, in these three angles self nature and the society vedatriyam itself advocates 14 steps to attain the world peace that is ultimatum that is the goal of our maharishi towards the world peace we all striving to but then to attain that he is talking about world without war economic justice all sort of points and final point relevant to our today discussion one world religion accept to all so the today subject moreover we are addressing with respect to it is a world religion which should be acceptable to all so the harm the yoga goal what is the yoga means the yoga the word rooted from the sanskrit word yuj yuj means joining yuj means it is harmony in joining that is how the word derived from the word yuj so the yoga means harmony so the harmony is naturally it is benefit uh, benedicted and it is everybody has come to this world to lead a harmonious life and how we can obtain a harmonious life maybe we can put it in steps the art of enriching our physical and mental health that means harmony within self an individual harmony how you can enrich is by having a physical health and there is a mental health both are interconnected both are interrelated so if there is a illness in the physical body obviously your mental health getting affected and if your mental health by way of emotion your physical body also getting affected either way both are independent param- both are interconnected parameters 
interdependent parameters we simply say physical body is the visible part of the mind mind is the invisible part of your body so the within the self if the harmony if the within the individual personality if harmony prevails then it can spread to the family and then the harmony can spread to the society and then harmony between individual wisdom and nature and ultimate yoga goal we lead a contentment in our life thereby nullification of our miseries so the peace and harmony if you look at karma yoga i just go one slide before the karma yoga means karma means action or a deed whatever the activity we do yoga means while indulging into any action action means need not be a physical movement or any sort of uh, arms and limbs movement it is anything related to our thought our word and deed which in case of indulging any of its action any of these three activities then if it yields a harmonious result by remembering our law of nature without conflict itself called yoga yoga means when we do any activity when we perform any activity doing the activity without forgetting the law of nature without conflict yielding harmony called yoga so the whole the whole the total the phrase of karma yoga is talking about while performing any particular action while performing any particular activity we are in a total awareness by knowing by analyzing and by the experience of yielding a harmonious result by understanding the law of nature so that is how the karma yoga means while performing any particular activity without forgetting the law of nature without conflict yielding harmony called karma yoga so the benefits obviously it yields the yoga system physical health rejuvenation of life energies mental health good relationship among the society maybe family is part of the society and purification of our genetic center and ultimately the self realization so then this all helps an individual to develop his personality we can't get into individual uh, explanation obviously you can think over you can also individually understand what really it calls for receptivity perspicacity creativity adaptability and we call it as ats adjustment tolerance sacrifice and of course the magnanimity ultimately how simple we are how simplicity the life is that is how the development of consciousness the personality development the yoga helps every individual to lead so the yoga as a karma yoga when we get into a subject the karma yoga very famous one uh, in bhagavad gita it was discussed in a war zone please understand it is the it is not the subject which was discussed in ashram it was not the subject discussed in a forest or in a very very peaceful harmonious area so it has been discussed and the whole discourse and the whole the discussion between the guru and shishya krishna and the arjuna happens in the war zone so in the bhagavad gita one of the slok that is slogam says what is yoga yoga karma su kausalam whatever i do whatever the activity i perform if i can do perform my allocated duty in an excellent manner that itself called yoga so that is kausala means i do it with devotion without any expectations in return any attachment to the activity that is how the kausalam we will go 
this particular uh, explanation in the coming slides so the entire the phrase yoga karmasu kausalam means while performing any allocated duty i do it without any attachment with the total devotion in an excellent execution of you know the entire uh, the obligation that is how the karma yoga so swami also defines in his karma yoga in his own terminology it signifies to perform our, your duty with the devotion for harmonious results without forgetting the law of nature without conflict which should always yielding a harmonious result so that is how maharishi our maharishi defines karma yoga doing performing our duty with the total devotion with the whole heartedly when i am doing the activity without any attachment to the action or what i am supposed to get what it supposed to yield i never get attached to that i just perform my duty without any expectation then the result obviously when i whole heartedly perform obviously it is going to yield harmonious result when i can align my activity along with the law of nature so the karma theory if you look at it is basically the cause and effect system so when we perform any action even the scientific world they also talk about the cause and effect system the newton i believe second last talks about if for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction the same way the karma theory our own scriptures says for every effect that everything i enjoy everything i could, i may suffer there is a root cause there is a karma attached to every sort of sufferings or enjoyment or the results or the life which i have been possessed with so then with this background our maharishi also talks about karma theory for every action action means as we earlier have seen in the screen it may be our thoughts it may be words it may be our deed all individual component itself in an individual action so every action in terms of thought word and deed it always resulting in pain pleasure peace and ecstasy supposing we perform we eat something and while eating any of the sweet i feel more pleasure i feel more happy but then is it attached to the the specific sweet the pleasure in that is the case you keep on eating 2 3 4 then obviously when you increase the quantity you feel little vomit sensation you feel little uncomfortable so that what it does mean so the pleasure is not attached to the specific sweet the pleasure is the energy within my body is getting aggravated converted when it goes beyond the limit of the tolerable level of my sensual senses and as well as its cell structure obviously the biomagnetism level getting decreased the same pleasure when i was enjoying initially while taking the sweet turn into pain so the pleasure and pain are not two different phenomena if i indulge into any of my action any of my activity with the limit and method with the limit and method approach with a pure awareness with a pure consciousness and then it will lead to pleasure if it is crossing the limit and method beyond the sensual limitation beyond the sense sensory structure then obviously my biomagnetic some level cell structure all the biomagnetic level getting deprived getting reduced so the same pleasure turn into pain but then 
if you can live if you can lead a life maintaining the pleasure and use your senses with a with a more awareness with more awareness for a longer period then the same mind the same peripheral consciousness automatically will get into a state of peace so whenever the mind stands whenever the mind stays for a longer period in peace then it as essentially gets its own strength and also it has got its own strength to search its own origin once it searches its origin and realizes its origin and merges with its origin the same peripheral consciousness turns into ecstasy so swami says any of my action it yields through peripheral consciousness while enjoying resulting pain pleasure peace and ecstasy so if there is a limit and method i enjoy pleasure and if the pleasure stays for a longer period while indulging using my senses then then it stays permanent peace in my living being and then if the peace prolongs for a and it i can maintain that then automatically when the mind merges with its origin turns into ecstasy if you look at any of the uh this four state of peripheral consciousness pain pleasure peace and ecstasy so the obviously the yoga system we talk about maintaining the harmonious system maintaining the harmonious system we call it as peace and harmony we swami has advocated five important areas we need to maintain the harmony that is between body and soul between soul and the mind between individual and the society between wisdom and the law of nature between objective of life and the survival on the earth so the first point the body and soul it is basically the body can made up of five elements and the soul the vital energy maintains the entire our physical bio routine so to maintain the harmonious relationship swami has structured a very beautiful simplified physical exercise to keep complete harmony between body and soul by maintaining three important circulation heat circulation air circulation blood circulation thereby if you maintain a harmonious and actually in its standard uh, pattern of circulation of blood air and heat then the harmony between body and soul is well maintained harmony between soul and the mind we swami has structured and has given simplified kundalini yoga whereby our mental frequency are getting tuned and we focus on our life force automatically the mental frequency come down to alpha and then if you keep practicing then you can still further tune to your mental frequency to theta as well delta so the mental frequency so longer i operate it i could maintain it at a subtle level then the harmony between soul and mind is well maintained if it goes if it goes beyond the alpha level aggressive level all sort of emotions all sort of a conflict all sort of a problems in the society it is basically in the emotional aggressive mind so it is essential for peace and harmony we need to maintain harmony between soul and the mind and the third component between individual and society so in an individual today the whole globe the entire world has become a global village we are well connected and the whole participants though in a very distant and the speaker is somewhere and we are all connected through aliar 
so this is how the society is well networked and everybody is well connected so nobody is independent nobody is dependent all are interconnected so it is like the whole society now has become a family today so essentially for everybody life you want to lead a peaceful and harmony life definitely we need to maintain within the family within the our relatives and within the other people in the society we need to maintain the harmony between individual and the law of nature and of course the objective of life should be the survival always should be the life objective aligned so that it is always towards development of the consciousness towards the perfection and that's how the objective of life is met and the harmony between wisdom and law of nature so what is law of nature law of nature is as we have seen for every action for every action there is a result always coming and it is not a separate one swami says the action itself a part of the the result even clinging to the action so the action and result both are even at some point not a different entity the very very result is clinging to the action so the any activity if i have to perform i need to be completely understand the background of it and i have to be very choosy and selective swami gives five parameters which i have not given in the slide but then you can also just think about in, in those points internally swami talks for five fundamental parameters motive and efficiency you must have the definite efficiency to perform and you should have, you should select and you should equip yourself the right motive and you need to perform at the right place at a right point of time at the right person so these five parameters motive efficiency time place an object of contact these five parameters i choose how about result for example i clap my hand so clapping of my hand is my action but did i produce the sound did the sound came because of my willingness no not at all it came on its own spontaneous so that means the action the activity which i prefer to choose the parameters it could may be by selecting motive efficiency time place and object of contact maybe on the my my side but then if you look at the result it is beyond my control so if i continuously clap the same sound same sound it will turn into heat the same sound turn into all sort of action that means for every action the activities are done by me where the result is beyond my control clapping on my hand my duty over whereas the result yielded on its own when i clap the hand the atomic structure the atoms within the hand getting friction in between and the magnetic force getting accumulated and the same magnetic force when it is getting intensified it gets converted into sound the same way when it is more intensified it is getting converted into the same pressure sound light taste and smell so the entire the physical transformation is not in my control the activity is mine whereas the result is out of my control so if i can enjoy my activity with a pure awareness knowing my past 
past experience understanding the current circumstances and i have past experience in certain activity and i know that this is going to yield definitely success or pleasure result pleasant result or is going to be pain so now understanding these three past experience present circumstances and the future result that is called trikala gnanam knowing the three dimensions the any of the past present and future aspects and a yogi able to assimilate and perform his duty so while performing his duty the action is under our control where is the result based on my action if i do within the limit and method my results are good results are pleasant if i if i indulged into my activity beyond the limit and method beyond crossed over sort of a limit then the same activity turned into pain that means if i do any of my activity good good intention in limit and method using all these three dimension of past present and future obviously the result comes as a boon as a acceptance as a appreciation of my activity if i have performed rather in the other way out of control beyond the limit and method beyond against the law of nature out of the sync with the synchronicity then the same action same activity as a punishment as a warning it is coming as a yield yield as a evil result as a bad result painful result to me that is that is if i can perform my activity with a clear control on self understanding the past experience present circumstance future result indulging into that with a limit and method with a pure awareness then it yields the result with a pleasant and as well as peaceful to not only to me to others also so that is why you perform the activity let the decide be decided by the almighty that is how the krishna says yoga karmasu kausalam you perform the duty with the total dedication the total willingness because you don't have anything to choose the result you don't have any authority to choose the result you are here to perform the result whereas i decide the result i declare the result and i have been there in the universe by sound light taste and smell in universe everywhere i am pervaded and you can see these phrases in bhagavad gita i am in everywhere i am spread in every right from the atom to the globe to entire inanimate to animate i can see my being it is been pervaded throughout the universe i am not separate from the universe and you cannot separate me from the universe so this is what ultimately the karma yoga gives you a wisdom perform the activity within the limit knowing the analyzing the past present and getting a realization of future knowing the the law of nature you if you do by aligning into the nature by aligning into the mightier force by aligning the natural force you can call it as god you can call it as universe unified force you can call it as nature whatsoever the terminology the word you call it as it is how that is called in tamil vali padudal in english we call it as worship of god worship of god means in every activity it could be of my thought word or deeds i see in the result while yielding the result either pain or pleasure peace or ecstasy as a four dimension of through my peripheral consciousness is physical presence of god worship of god and 
any religion if you look at they only teach these two things one is worship of god another one is worship of society being with a total awareness <clears throat> maintaining the harmony within self and align with the nature you perform the activity to govern the self called worship of god the same responsibility the same awareness as you are well connected with the society follow the same virtues while indulging while interacting while moving with the society you maintain the same awareness in your duty when you perform that is through morality duty charity you call it as worship of society so these two components these are all the core components of any religion any religion across the world you look at it one is worship of god and <coughs> of course worship of society these are all again which is nothing but our karma yoga also advocates by giving you the background by giving you a realization what for it is now you can understand very well and take it forward all your activity with the same sort of light in your path when you carry on in your activities and then the you are you yourself become a karma yogi and when a karma yogi when he follows his life then you he feels the total gratefulness to the nature to the almighty to the overall unified force for such a phenomenon how the unified force works through in its action and result in its <coughs> in its every sort of uh, action and result how it works beautifully we call it as kurdal aram that is the law of justice that is how the gratefulness we can we appreciate the nature we appreciate the law of nature the totality the universal consciousness how it beautifully works uh, in the universe how it works in the universe on the earth in the living being in our human being we understood the whole the uh, uh, the kind of uh, the pervasiveness the kind of uh, penetration of the of the unified force then we feel obviously the gratefulness of the nature and once you as i was talking about in the beginning once you realize the totality obviously you land up in your duty consciousness so when we the purpose the very life of purpose is to develop the consciousness by performing our duty without any sort of uh, compromise and while performing any activity our mind is always on a vigil always on a constant awareness while performing any activity this becomes it is not a separate phenomenon it is not a separate thing to do it is one among your day to day life yogi never feels he lives as a karma yogi he simply lives in karma yoga he is not a karma yoga separate from his life his life itself become karma yoga karma yogi so the virtuous we call it as worship of society morality swami gives any of our deed while using thought word or action should not inflict pain to self or others at present or in future to the physical or mental body and also morality duty charity then comes duty we are indebted to the society which fed everything including food cloth shelter from our childhood and of course whatever we have taken it all taken without any investment without any sort of uh, repayment now once we have grown once we have come up to maturity we have to repay whatever the due been given to us as a free of goods should pay as a duty back to the society and the charity we also bound to act selflessly and we need to support the people in the society who are marginal and who really not able to earn because of the opportunity is not there because of their limitations because of their education because of the social status we should we should live up we should come up 
and then we should support them to support their lives also called charity. These three phenomenon, morality, duty, charity, it automatically, spontaneously for a yogi, for a karma yogi, it evolves. So the results, as I was talking about, not a separate one from the action, it is clinging to the action. Like once you consume some food and we don't know what is happening once we consume the food, what happened? But scientifically, the medical science says it is converted into seven minerals. It converted into juice and then it is converted into blood and it converted into flesh, flesh into fat, fat into bone, bone into bone marrow, bone marrow into sexual vital fluid as its bio routine, whether we do it or not. Swami was ad addressing in the US, I think some Colorado University, some student was asking, God is not there. Almighty is not there. It is all humpback. Swami says, it's correct. That is not there. It is a, only the realization we need to do. What you had yesterday, Swami he said, I had some uh, dosa yesterday. Swami said, then what happened to it? He was saying it has got digested and of course it has come out. Swami said, as a normal student, you can talk like, uh, you know, a general term, but I am a Siddha and Yoga as well as Ayurveda practitioner. I know this food automatically, once you consume, getting into seven minerals, did you do that? No. Your parents doing it? No. Your friends are doing? No. Then how it happens? Then that student says, it is by nature. Ah, you call it as nature. Somebody is call it as God. Somebody is call it as Almighty. Somebody is calling it as universal conscious. Words are different. But the phenomenon, the action, the kind of uh, the entire, the functions, one and all indicate the same function. So that is the understanding. We need to have the entire universe and the universe in the earth, living beings. It is all connected through a single united force called unified force. So knowing this, now we can understand every action, this has become according to our action based on our motive, efficiency, time and place, object of contact, with the result into pain, pleasure, peace and ecstasy. And I can control through my pure awareness and manage my activities so that it yields always a pleasant result, a harmonious result, and the whole society may enjoy the same state of mind. And that is the time you can realize this is not one religion, that is the commonology. It is a common thesis for the entire humanity as a common religion that is Swami termed as world holistic religion. So there is no contradiction. Everybody has to perform. Everybody has to go through the same theology. And to do that, we have to, Swami has already structured the meditation, introspection, sublimation, getting away from our bad imprints and tune your senses through the, do the good habits and increase your good imprints called sublimation, thereby the perfection of consciousness. So once you understand not only the current life that has been accumulated, all our activities, not only bringing the result, also imprints in our seed, imprints in our biomagnetism, imprints in five important places. And also it goes to seven generations as a continuous through our son, through our the grandson. Likewise, the entire birth, it keeps continuing our experience. So that means whatever the life I am benedicted, I am given this life is based on the action of me in this life called prarapta and based on my forefathers, their karmas, their activities called sanjita and this has become my personality. So if my life, whatever I am enjoying, it may be pleasant or suffering, it is not of anybody outside, it is only based on my imprint. Accept the presence, Buddha says, accept the presence is the first step towards the realization.
So then nature, suppose it has to balance out the way it has got imprinted, it has to come out, how it comes out, either through suffering or enjoyment through any of the third man, who is not our enemy, who simply has come to us to remove, to annihilate my imprints. So to avoid the miseries, we need to sublimate our evil characters into pious through all these techniques called meditation and introspection and karma yoga, the way life to do purification, help others that will help us to understand the purpose of the life. Karma yoga, once you understand the nature, you understand the primordial state, other word called Brahman, other state called static, which unites the entire universe through unified force. Of course, the truth, which is nothing a different, different words, all are one and all through the same realization that you will learn through a proper meditation techniques. Once we understand and we are any have been come to this world, we are in this world and a day there for our life, any, everyone carrying a return ticket. So now we live this world with a pure sort of a realization and we are able to lead our life peacefully and help others peacefully, then you automatically, your mind will be always grateful to the nature and also grateful the other living being around. And particularly, so far we have suppressed women and the labors. You turn into a sort of a motivator. You will always help them <coughs> to enrich their life, help them to come up as a, with the courtesy, treat them with the courtesy for their contribution to the society. So there are five duties in Karma Yoga to the self and the family. And family again reflects into relation and to the country and to the world. So the time very limited. So I'm just giving you, sharing you the key points. The duty conscious, basically the word duty, even in Tamil, we say kadan, kadan turn into kadamai. The same way the word duty turned into, due turned into duty, whatever the society has given us from the childhood, we need to pay back. It's a service back to the society, <coughs> paying our dues. So whatever we indulge in our life, it all given by society. Even today, Swami says, you take handful food on your hand and just think somewhere somebody in the agriculture, in the field, they have cultivated and they have grown, they have made their labor work and they, they again brought it to the factory. Then they have segregated and that has been transported so many labors and come to the shop, come to our house and our wife again cooking it. How many labor involved just as reached as a handful of food in my hand? So many labor involved. So how do I do that by repaying? By repaying my service as a service by the way of service to the society. That is how the duty conscious, the great scientist talks about a hundred times every day. <clears throat> I remind myself that my inner and outer life depend the labors of other men, living and dead. And that I must exert in the same measure to the society as I have received, still I am received. So then while performing any duty without any expectation, selfless service, we call it as Niskamya Karma. When you do it with certain desire for selfish reason, that is called Kamyam. Then when you do it without expectation, you call it as Niskamyam. In Tamil it says, Swami, unakkum nalladai, urukkum nalladai, ninaippadum, saivadum, nithiyakkadam. <coughs> and last few slides, I will just conclude faster. So knowing all the points, and Valluva says, when you can realize to the core, and of course, we our mind is purified, and we are all towards the realization of self as well as the, the uh, ultimate consciousness, the perfection of consciousness. So there are 10 steps of Karma Yoga Swami advocates. 
respecting parent guru head of government and law of nature number 2 accepting realizing almighty is all pervasive not only outside within me as my conscious and i should not inflict as i know that the same consciousness working in all other living being i should not inflict pain through my thought word and deeds and i while indulging by activity food work sleep sensual enjoyment and thought i should maintain the limit and method and lead a virtuous life by way of duty morality charity and i have five important duty to do self family relative country to the world and i need to render service to the society by spreading spiritual knowledge and working towards world peace and i always should appreciate the greatness of men and from my income i should always take away 1% and use it for the welfare of upliftment of the society and for the purification of genetic center continuously i have to practice meditation and introspection with these words i conclude my uh, discourse on karma yoga one and all i thank you again and i really cherished and thank you for the opportunity for sharing this wonderful evening my experience world problem